أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله It's a topic of our present time relating to marriage and divorce. The divorce rate in this country is about 50%. And now it is also affecting the Muslim community. You see, marriage is in accordance with Allah's plan <clears throat> in that babies are not found behind the bushes. They are put on your lap and they have to be looked after and trained. As opposed to the calves of the animals, <clears throat> when a cow gives birth to a calf or a mare to a calf or a deer to a little one, within a short time they are able to stand up. However, with a human baby, it takes nearly two years for them to walk properly. And it takes another 18 years to, for them to be trained to be able to completely look after themselves and to be, in, be independent. Therefore, parents have to look after the children. Henceforth, it is a lifetime commitment. So the two individuals when marrying, <clears throat> they must be physically and mentally and intellectually matured. They must realize that after they get married, they are not only two individuals, but now they become one pair, one set, one couple. And they will now be using, hopefully, less of I and more of we. And it will demand <clears throat> a lot of adjustment, tolerance, sacrifices, compromises, constantly and continuously. According to the teachings of Islam, a man or a husband is regarded as the head of the family, <clears throat> and the wife as the heart of the family. These are befitting terms because the marriage institution is now a recognized institution and somebody has to be the head of that institution. Before the marriage, men and women are equal in every way. When they get married, however, now it becomes an institution and somebody has to be the head of the institution. So you know in business businesses when two partners get together and they go to the accountant, the accountant advises them that if there is a deadlock, it will be difficult for them to solve the problem. So it is better if a senior partner would have 51% and his other partner would have 49%. So in case of a deadlock situation, he would use that extra lever to resolve the problem. So in the case of the institution of marriage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Ulijale alayhinna daraja that husband and wife are equal except that a man has is one degree above. One degree above meaning that he enjoys the fifty and a half and she has forty nine and a half. So in business partnership the accountants advise forty nine and fifty one. In lifetime partnership Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us and he commands that is 14 and a, 49 and a half and 50 and a half in order to break a deadlock if there is a deadlock. And Allah SWT tells us in Surah An-Nisa chapter 4 verse 34 رِجَالُ خَوَّامُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ بِمَا فَضَلَ اللَّهُ بَعْدُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْدُ وَبِمَا أَنْفَخُوا مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ Men are protectors of women because Allah has given some more than others 
and because they give money, they spend money on them, that is on the family, the wife and the family. And again we are told in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 2 to 8, men have rights equal to those of women, except as I have just mentioned, men have men or husbands are one degree above. So with this term Khawam, Khawam, they are the head of the family, they are the protectors of the family, they are the ones who provide to the family. Therefore this terminology is used for them. However, in this country, uh, in the system that we live in, if the husband is not working, the wife is not working, and uh, they are dependent on social security, and the husband still insists that he is khawam, and that he is one degree above. But his khawam, the condition is that he earns and spends on the family. But if he says that, the wife is quite right in answering him back and saying that, look, you are not my khawam anymore, it's the state that is khawam. And therefore you don't have this same right as khawam because you're not earning and you're not spending money on us and the family. So this is a point to be borne in mind. Also, <coughs> we have situations whereby <coughs> the husband loses his job and the wife has to go out and earn the money. She now is a professional lady, maybe a consultant, a doctor consultant, and she earns a lot of money. But the family has to be looked after. So in this case, uh, the husband now becomes a house husband and she now becomes the earner. So he cannot justify his position as the head of the family now because he's not earning, he's not supporting the family, the wife is supporting the family. So from the Islamic perspective, a man being or a husband being the head of the family and the wife being the heart of the family, and these terms are befitting because you see the wife or the mother is sentimentally and emotionally attached to the children more than the father can ever be because after all the children were once a part of her body so she is obviously naturally sentimentally and emotionally attached to the children but now a husband when he becomes a house husband he can never be as sentimentally and emotionally attached to the children as the mother can be therefore he cannot be the heart of the family. Now she becomes the head of the family and he now becomes the house, house husband. He can't be the heart of the family. So then looking at it from this logic, he merely becomes a part of the family, an organ of the family. So these are the points for us to be born in this mind and in mind and uh, we have to resort to the reality of the situation and make adjustments accordingly. And of course a successful marriage, it demands mutual respect and compassion on all occasions, at all times, regardless of the circumstances. And communication is important because uh, it's a unique relationship whereby the husband is supposed to be able to pour out his heart to the wife and wife should be able to do the same. If they can't do that, if they're withholding, then of course there is some kind of barrier that should not be present. And of course one should at all times, on all occasions, be supportive to each other. You cannot withdraw because of one reason or another. There are no reasons. You have to support your, your partner. And love and compassion, loyalty is important because the Holy Quran tells us in Surah to Rome, chapter 30, verse 21, And among his signs is this, that he created for you mates from among yourselves, that ye may dwell in tranquility with them, and he has put love and mercy between your hearts. Verily, in that are signs for those who reflect. So, 
intimacy then gives rise to children out of this union and it is always the female that brings forth the offsprings whether female or male and the father is as necessary as the mother for bringing forth children and the rest and love and tranquility are found in the normal relations of a father and mother dwelling together in bringing up family so this fidelity the trust is also very important the loyalty is very important so if one cheats then of course he or she are taking uh, a massive risk because in the relationship of husband and wife in this partnership if the trust is not there then obviously the marriage cannot last therefore faithfulness trust and loyalty are crucial to the success of a marriage and the responsibility has to be shared the circumstances change so it can be due to financial reasons due to emotional or psychological or maybe there's some ailments so adjustments have to be made and responsibilities have to be shared accordingly and they must agree on each other because the objective is always there to persevere regardless of the circumstances to make the marriage a success prayer and faith are also very important because taqwa has to be exercised there are many many tem- temptations in this promiscuous society and unless taqwa is present one can be misled easily therefore prayers and close plus one of taala gives one strength to continue with piety and honor the relationship that one has undertaken <coughs> patience and tolerance is very important so this sacrifices that one may makes adjustments compromises and sacrifices and so on these are continuous that one has to do at all times in fact sometimes you know certain words are misunderstood in the beginning this is when that they come from different backgrounds and so obviously they don't understand stand at each other so that takes time for the two to get to know each other and sometimes when one speaks a sentence it can easily be misunderstood so one has to learn to find out what the intention is behind the words that the partner is speaking before coming to any hasty conclusion so islamic teachings then stresses the importance of family values including care and to discharge the primary responsibility which is to uh, bring up bringing up children so the objective and is to have the will determination perseverance for the companionship to be harmonious and successful in accordance with the islamic principles now the marriage breaks down due it fails due to lack of communication misunderstanding which gives rise to conflicts there can be financial issues you know because one has to make adjustments accordingly when the earnings are good but when there are financial strains then of course adjustments have to be made accordingly in fer- infidelity that is disloyalty one being unfaithful to the other then of course this is devastating for the marriage they can be a mismatch but adjustments can be made for instance the wife could be an extrovert husband can be an introvert but these adjustments can be made and problems can be overcome once the initial period of understanding is over the differences in cultural background and differences in nature often complement each other and add color to the companionship 
sometimes husband and wife and with other relatives sometimes and friends we have unrealistic expectations and when those expectations are not fulfilled then we are disappointed and disappointment gives rise to frustration and gives rise to disagreements and quarrels then there can be lack of intimacy physical and emotional intimacy intimacy and that can strain the marriage so it's important that if there is a problem it should be resolved and uh, method should be found to overcome the drawback there can be external stresses that could be psychological that could be due to relatives due to friends or in the environment where you live so that again has to be talk over and on that maybe some professional guidance may be needed so one cannot draw a general conclusion because every marriage is unique every individual is unique every partnership is unique and therefore the main key points we have to bear in mind is the love and compassion this love and compassion if it's sincere then it will give rise and bring forth tranquility and love and peace so this is important for us when we enter into the institution of marriage to bear these points in mind to ensure inshallah that the marriage is successful so let us then pray that for those who are looking for spouses may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them befitting spouses and those who are married may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them successful marriage with love and tranquility a lifelong companionship inshallah wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah